Welcome students, I'm James Gregor Mukero. I'm from GS College, a Spanish State Campus. Um, I'm lecturing in Materials Level 3. Uh, today's lesson is about uh, joining metals by soldering, brazing and welding. It is topic 5 in our SOS 5.1. Right, so in brief, I'm going to introduce you to the safety aspects of welding and the theory of welding, as well as various uh, methods of welding. All right, let's go to some definitions. Right, soldering is joining together separate pieces of metals using another metal with a lower melting point. So what we create there is a metallurgical bond. Right, then brazing, we use a slightly higher temperature than soldering, usually a bronze or silver soldering iron. So we can use a temperature of 450 degrees. Then when we do welding or fusion welding, this is the application of intense heat to a joint between two parts to melt and intermix the constituents parts together. So here we use intense heat. So upon cooling and solidification, fusion occurs and the two parts become one. Right. Now let's go to the safety aspects of welding. So when we weld, there are potential hazards when welding. So this includes the risk of fire. It also includes injury by burning. Number three, there can be suffocation by fumes and inert gases. Right. Since some of the welding is electrical, there's also risk of electrocution. Right. Then intense light. That arc eye, it can damage your eyes due to the uh, spark which is created by the welding machine. There are also fumes which are produced when we are welding. Right, so inhalation of fumes and dust, possible explosions can also happen. Then the light which comes from the welding machine uh, can also damage your skin, leading to skin cancer from UV light. Right, so in terms, of, in terms of welding, you need to wear the proper personal protective equipment. So what you need to wear in order to prevent fire, you must wear a leather apron, which is uh, resistant to the sparks. Then you must also wear long gloves, leather gloves, which are also resistant to heat. Then in order to protect your eyes, you must wear a welding helmet, this is an auto-darkening welding helmet. Yes, so it is going to protect your eyes from the intense light which is generated by arc welding. Right, you must also wear a dust mask or a, a, an inhaler or a face mask which will prevent the, which will prevent the, the fumes from going into your chest because if you inhale some of the gases, they might damage your, your chest. Okay, then in, in cases of fire, we need to have a fire extinguisher and a bucket, bucket of water, but not in cases of electrical fire, we do not use water. The water is just for cooling you down when you get burns on your skin, right? So that is the aspect of safety which must be observed during welding. Now I would like to go on to the various types of welding which we are going to cover in our syllabus. Right, so the welding precautions in summary, you must remove all unnecessary combustible materials from the work area, ensure that there is an adequate supply of fresh air to prevent suffocation. Then when working or adjusting to confined spaces, ensure that there are no explosive gases. Do not weld where there are puddles of water. Obtain a hot work permit before any work is done. That is when you want to weld around the area. Then you must alert others as to your intention and take the necessary precautions to ensure their safety as well as yours. So safety first. If we don't take care of our, ourselves, we might it might result in fatalities or injuries. Okay. Right, let's go now to the arc welding types as outlined in our slabbers. The first type of welding which we are going to discuss is called shielded metal arc welding. 
So the abbreviation we use is SMAW, also called stick electrode welding or downhand welding. Then another second type of welding which is more popular is called gas metal arc welding. It's abbreviated as GMAW, also called metal innate gas or MIG or metal active gas, MAG. Right. Then the third type of welding is called flux cord arc welding. Its abbreviation is FCAW. Okay. Then we also have code number four, which is submerged arc welding. We use SAW to represent submerged arc welding. Right. Then another type of welding is called gas tungsten arc or TIG. It uses tungsten and gas. Right, then uh, we also have something called spot welding, which, which uses resistance to weld at a specific spot. Okay, so let's now talk about the welding circuit. So we start with SMAW, which is the shielded manual arc welding. So it uses a welding machine which is called an electrical welding machine or inverter, right? So in this diagram, it shows a representation of the, the circuit. So basically, it operates from the 220 voltage supply, changes the voltage to DC, right? It is a positive terminal and a negative terminal. So the positive terminal is the electrode holder while is the negative terminal is the earth holder. So we connect our circuit as shown in the diagram. Okay. Right, so again, precautions which must be taken when using this machine is to, to prevent short-circuiting the machine. So we will also explain how to prevent this short-circuiting of the machine which can eventually damage the machine or it will switch off the whole power supply. Okay, right, so in my picture there, it's our symbol inverter. What are the aspects? It is a positive, negative, as I said. So you can also adjust the current depending with what you are welding. If you are welding thin metals, you reduce the amount of current, which reduces the amount of heat. If you are welding very thick metals, you increase the amount of current, which also increases the amount of, of heat. Yes, so it is an on-off button, which you can use to, to cool off the machine in every five minute to 10 minute cycle of welding. Right, let's now describe what is SMAW, manual arc welding. Right, like, like we said, it's mostly commonly used process it is flexible, can be used in all welding position. Uh, it is relatively slow deposition rates, low current, high, uh, highly dependent on welder skill. So it means it is your hand which produces the good quality uh, uh, welds. So it uses a, an electrode which is coated with flask around it. So it is a flask coated electrode. So the world current is important. Too low current will mean that you don't have enough heat. Too high current will mean that you have got too much heat. So if the current is too low, your world will not penetrate and fuse. If the current is too high, your world is going to overburn and there will be a big wall indicating that you uh, have supplied too much, too much heat. Then let's now talk about the types of electrodes which are used. So in my slides here, here is an example of an electrode. So it says E7018. So this is the electrode code. So we are just going to describe what this uh, electrode code uh, stands for. So the E, it simply stands for a, an electric arc welding electrode. So when you get this electrode, you know that this one will be used for electric arc welding. Others will be used for gas 
others will be used with different machines. Right. Then let's go to the 70. Right. The 70, it actually designates the strength which you are going to get when you have welded. So the strength of your joint. So when it says 70, it simply means 70,000 uh, PSI, which is pound per square inch. But if you want to convert it to megapascals, we simply multiply by 6.9. So it will give us around uh, between 400 uh, megapascal to 500 megapascal. So it shows the strength of the, the world. Right, then the last two numbers will tell us about the world position in which the electrodes are, use, are used. So the position might mean that you are welding horizontally or you are welding in a vertical position or you are welding under. When you are welding in the roof, it's an underhand weld. So it will, those two numbers will tell us the position. Then the last number on our electrode code, the, the last number varies from one to eight. The most common number is eight, means that it's a low hydrogen or iron powder. Then the number three, it indicates a titanium. So we don't really need to actually go into detail, but we must know it is representing the constituent of the electrode. So this is important for welders because whatever chemical you are using with your metal can affect the strength of your joint. So in an exam situation, we will ask you as a student to be able to interpret this uh, electrode code to tell us what does the E stand for. You must also tell us what does the two first numbers. It can be 70, it can be 60. What do they represent? Then you must also explain to us what the two last numbers represent and lastly what the last number represent. So that is the electrode uh, code. So basically in SMAW, there are some basic essentials which you must follow for a good world. So uh, we have talked about safety already. We said you must operate in a safe and cluttered place to work. Then number two, you need a sturdy steel topped table to work with. Then number three, you need a heavy scratch plate where you will be, uh, it will be damaging. Then you also need good lighting. So do not weld in a dark place. You also need adequate ventilation, as we said. Then we also need uh, clamps and, uh, and magnets to hold your, your workpiece. Then the other tool which we need is a chipping hammer. So we use a chipping hammer to remove the slug when we are welding. So when you weld, because your electrode is shielded, it's going to fill the weld pool with a lot of dirt, which is the slag. So your chipping hammer is going to remove the, the slag. Okay, then uh, we, can, we can also use a heated quiver for drying electrodes. So we do not need moisture in your electrodes. Uh, normally you can dry them in the sun. You can also dry them in an oven or you can dry them with any source of heat so that you don't have moisture. If we have got too much moisture in an electrode, it's going to lead to a defect. There will be porosity. Porosity means there are some water bubbles inside your, your, your electrode. Okay, so that is it about our SMAW, standing for a Shielded Metal Arc Welding. Right, the next slide is just going to show us uh, the types of welds when we are doing SMAW, right, and the defects. So we said there are two things which you must control. You must control the amount of current which you are putting, and then you must also control your hand. This is called the arc length. So if your hand is too fast or if your hand is too slow, we, we will see a different result in terms of the quality of weld. Then the arc length is the tip of the welding electrode. When you lift it up, we say you increase the arc. When you dip it into the joint, we say you decrease the arc. So in this slide, 
we just going to show the different results which you will get. So if your current is at 45 amps, this means your current is lower. So you are going to get those lumps showing that some of the material is not melting. So that means current is too low. So when you look in that picture, you'll see those lumps there. It's a bad quality weld. Right, then when uh, your arc length is too long, this means you have pulled out your, 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 your electrode. The electrode, the stick is not, is not touching, but it's away from the joint. So we say your arc length is too long. So you are going to get that type of uh, joint, which is sometimes melting, sometimes not melting, and a lot of sputter, right? Then your hand, your welding hand, your travel speed is too fast. This is when you are, mostly when beginners are starting, they are afraid. So they will pull it uh, very fast. So that means your travel speed is too fast. So when your travel speed is too fast, you are just going to pull your, your weld pull or melt across. It's not going to penetrate into the joints to form a, a joint. Then the acceptable one is that one at the bottom of the, the slide. Here it is a consistency and smooth as well as a, 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 it's, it has penetrated into the joint correctly. So uh, students, the, your, the quality of your weld depends on a variety of factors. Firstly, we said it depends on the current. Secondly, we said it depends on your arc length. It also depends on your travel speed and it also depends on the electrode type which you are going to use. Okay, right, I would like now to conclude the, the lesson with how do you check or how do you inspect a good world? So there are many methods which are called non-destructive testing methods which we can use to inspect your SMAW world or any type of weld, right? So we can use um, non-destructive method, which is the dye penetration. So if you want to see if your weld has got holes, we can use a dye, which then penetrates into your holes. Then when we put a light, we can be able to see that the dye has gone through. This means your, your joint has got a, 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 a hole or it is, it is not uh, solid. Then technology has increased. We can also use X-ray radiography. That is, we take the X-ray of the whole joint to see whether it has got cracks or defects, so we can be able to check the quality. Then also technology, we, we also have a magnetic tester, which, which is simple. It simply puts some iron fillings and then the magnetic field will show us where are the holes as the iron fillings are being attracted to the holes in your world, right? Then the last type of uh, technology which we can use to check for the world quality is called ultrasonic detection. So this one, it simply sends some ultrasonic waves or sound waves. Then the, the, the type of echo will tell us whether your world is good or there are some voids. So the, the sound coming from that echo tells us if your world is good or it's void. All right, students, so let us now uh, summarize what we have learned in today's lesson. So in today's lesson, we have learned the definition of soldering. What is soldering? What is brazing? And what is welding? Then we have also discussed the safety aspects of welding, and uh, we discussed what are the personal protective equipment which you need to wear in order to protect yourself from the, the dangers as well as hazards which are associated with welding. Then we have also mentioned the various methods of welding we, which included SMAW and others. Then we have discussed uh, the first one, which is SMAW, that is shielded metal arc welding. This uses a, an electrical inverter. We've also talked of the 
a welding machine which we are going to use and the setup how you are going to to set it uh, to set it up right so you should have noticed that the emphasis was basically on safety because it uses electricity and it uses a an electrical shorting which is the arc then we've also talked about the different qualities of welds and how you can be able to control your your machine in order to be able to come up with a good quality weld. So this included being able to control the amount of current. This included being able to control the speed at which you weld. And it also included the electric arc. So in order for you to be able to get more information, you can go to our social media platform uh, for GS College. We also have a Facebook account for GS uh, College. Here you'll be able to find more information. And for also those who are interested in taking up courses in engineering, they can also find out on our website how to uh, apply and how to go about uh, registering for the coming, uh, for the following year or when the campuses are open. Right, our campus is Banisset campus. It's one of the best campuses in the, in the college. Uh, it's located here in Glenmore, uh, around Don Donald, a few kilometers from MLO campus. So students, you are welcome to inquire, even to call us on our college uh, phone, as well as to send us emails on our social media uh, platform. So I think that is it for today. From me, uh, James Mugero, I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.